In this video, we will practice a few examples related to corresponding angles. In example A, it says, if the measure of angle 8 equals 110 degrees, so I see angle 8 here, that's 110 degrees, and the measure of angle 4 equals 110 degrees, then what do we know about lines L and M? So angle 8 and angle 4 are corresponding angles because they're both in the bottom right corner of the set of four angles. And what you should know about corresponding angles is that they are congruent if and only if lines are parallel. So because these two angles are congruent, they're both 110 degrees, it means that these two lines, L and M, have to be parallel. So what we know is that L is parallel to M. All right, let's go on to example B, which says if the measure of angle 2 equals 76 degrees, so again, let's mark that in, what is the measure of angle 6? So this is what we're trying to figure out. So angle 2 and angle 6, again, are corresponding angles because this time they're both in the upper right corner of the set of angles. I also noticed that these two lines are marked as parallel. So that means because the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles have to be congruent, which means that the measure of angle 6 has to be 76 degrees, just like angle 2 was. So this will be 76 degrees as well. So because the lines are parallel, the corresponding angles are congruent. All right, let's go on to our final example. Using the picture above, list pairs of corresponding angles. So it's good practice to be able to make sure you can list all four pairs, and there will be four pairs when it's this typical situation of two parallel lines and a transversal. So the first one I see is angle one, matches with angle 5. And keep in mind that those angles, we don't know for sure that they are congruent unless the lines are marked as parallel. So angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding, and that means they would be congruent if the lines were parallel. The next set of corresponding angles is 2 and 6. So angle 2 and angle 6 are also corresponding angles. Next, going around, we have angle 4 and angle 8. And finally, the last angles that are unmarked are going to be corresponding, angle 3 and angle 7. The biggest mistake that people will make is to assume that in this sort of situation, the angles are congruent, those corresponding angles. So just remember, if it's not marked, even though it might look like it, you can't assume that lines are parallel and therefore that the corresponding angles are congruent.